Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to share with you guys three differences between Amazon FBA private label and Amazon FBA wholesaling. So that way you can decide for yourself which one is a better concept for you to go into if you are looking into selling on Amazon. Now, if this is your first time on the channel, welcome. My name is Bashar Katun. I'm the founder of BJK University, an education company with a mission to impact 1 million lives. So there are kind of three areas that I want to touch on. Uh, when it comes to those two concepts, right? And, and then I'll share with you kind of my experience and what I do right now and why I do it and how did I get into it as well, right? So the very first thing that I wanna touch on is money, right? Or budget, you know? So, the, you know, this is, this is, a, uh, this is a, a, a subject or, or a... a uh, something that a lot of people talk about, right? This is like the very first thing that you think about when you first want to start anything, when you first want to do anything is, well, how much money is, is it going to take, right? Um, do I need to invest this much? Do I need to invest that much? I only have that much. I have a lot of videos in my channel where I talk about you needing to have money in order for you to start a business, but you personally do not need to have the money in order for you to start the business. So here's what I mean. If you want to start a business, don't look at your savings account. Don't look at how much you're making per month and say, okay, well, I only have 3,000 or 4,000, so I'm gonna find a business that fits this. Instead, find a business that you see yourself doing and then go find the money. Let's just say they wanna start selling on Amazon and you need $10,000 to start. Well, maybe you only have three, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't start. All that means is go out there and find somebody who has the 10,000, build a system, Build, on, build a, a process on how they're going to get an ROI, a return on investment on their money, and then just simply have them become your partner and inject money in your business. This is how I started. That was $150,000 in debt when I first started selling on Amazon. I simply borrowed money. I did not bring investors. Now that I know, I probably should have. I would have probably been able to grow my business a lot further, a lot faster. Instead, I borrowed money. Now, what happens now? Borrowing money obviously is good because you know you don't you're not giving uh, stake in your business. But what it does is it removes cash flow from your business, and it depends on how much money you are borrowing. You need to pay that money back. That's why investments are good. Bringing on partners are good because even if the business you know doesn't work out, you're not stuck needing to pay back that money. But again, I could talk about this topic for like hours and hours. But let's kind of stick here. So with wholesale, let's just kind of, so let's say wholesale. And sorry about my handwriting. And this is uh, F, uh, private label. I'm just gonna call it PL, right? So private label. So just a little bit about these concepts. Wholesaling, it's simply where you, um, so you'll find a, a distributor that you can work with and then you simply go to the distributor and say, hey, I want to sell Expo markers on Amazon. Can you sell me 100? They'll sell you 100, you ship them to Amazon, and then you start selling. Now, the pros about that is that a lot of those suppliers are located in the US, if you are selling in the US, right? And it's easier to get this without needing to like do any changes to it, right? But the cons about that is that you and like 10 other people are competing on the same listing to get the, the same sale, right? To sell the same exact product. So literally the only difference between you and other sellers on that listing is just the, uh, uh, um, is just the, the price. There's no other differentiation. With private label, however, you're creating your own Expo brand. So the pro about that, well, let's talk about the con. The con about that is a lot of the people that you're gonna be working with, a lot of the manufacturers are overseas, right? So it takes longer for the shipping. However, you are creating your own brand. So that way you are unique and this is unique to you. No one can compete with you in this specific brand, right? So when it comes to money, it's about the same thing or it requires about the same to start wholesale or start FB, uh, private label simply because you are needing to buy stock up front right? With wholesale, you're probably going to have multiple products, however. So your stock, let's say it's $10,000. That 10,000 is probably going to be split over like 10 different products where with private label, it's going to probably be spent on one product, right? So that's kind of the difference, but the money, it's about the same, right? Now, the second thing that I want to touch on 
is time. And that's the thing that I was just talking about earlier. Time getting started, this takes less time to get started, but it's harder to scale. You can go and find distributors and simply get started immediately because again, you're not creating a differentiation. You're, a lot of your distributors, a lot of the people that you're gonna be getting product from are in the United States, right? Unless if you sell in other marketplaces and that's gonna be a little different. So you can get started right away. Where with FBA, you need to get samples. You need to actually get, you know, uh, uh, um, you need to get, uh, uh, yeah, you need to get samples. You need to differentiate the product. You need to stand out from the competition, right? And then also a lot of your manufacturers are overseas. So it is going to take a little bit of time, right? So money or money is the same. So both of them, uh, I guess two. So let's do X and then give this X. Okay, here, let's do this. So this is check one for the money because they're both the same. Time, that's gets the check, right? And then the third thing is scalability. Right? Are they both scalable? Yes, they're both scalable. I've seen sellers do very well with wholesaling, right? They are both scalable. But which one is easier? So I'm going to tell you a little bit about wholesale, and then I'll tell you a little bit about FBI, uh, private label, right? So with wholesale, in order for you to just say make $50,000 a month, you'll probably need anywhere between 10 to maybe 30 different products, right? Now, on one side, that could be good because you have diversification. And if one product doesn't do good, you have other products that are going to pick it. But that means you're going to be stuck to your computer all the time, constantly looking for more products. Just simply because a lot of those products, again, they're not unique. And because you are, well, not a lot of them, all of them. And you are competing against 10 other sellers, 20 other sellers on the same listing, fighting for the same buy box. And the only differentiation between you and the other sellers is the, 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 the price. And there's literally tools out there that that's all they do is decrease your price by 10 cents or 20 cents every time your competitor decreases their price. So you can see how like your profits can just simply keep slimming down, right? Now with private label on the other end, it's very scalable. One product can literally go to making you 20, 30, 50, 60. I've seen products making $100,000 per month. Now I'm not telling you that every single product you're gonna launch is gonna do that. And I'm not telling you that your product is gonna do that. I'm telling you that in my experience, I've seen that. However, the average product will make a minimum of five to $10,000 per month, minimum. And that's like, it's normal. Five to $10,000 a month, it's normal, one product. Where, where you'll need like two to four products with wholesale to do that. So why is that easier? Because you're not constantly needing to look for products. You're not constantly needing to you know, find suppliers, negotiate, do all that stuff. It's just one deal, one time you do it, and it's set and done, right? So for me personally, this gets a, okay, so the money is the same, the time, and then this gets a check on the scalability, right? Now, you might be thinking, okay, they're kind of both the same, so which one should I go for? Well, that's a decision that you should be making on your own. I shouldn't be telling you what to do. But personally for me, I can share my experience with you. And you probably, if you've been following me for any length of time, you've probably seen me talking about private label and, and why I like to personally choose it, right? Because when I first started selling on Amazon, I was a drop shipper. I did retail arbitrage. I toyed around a little bit with wholesale until I ended with private label. Private label was the last thing I did simply because First, you do need more money. So if you got no money, you should start with drop shipping or retail arbitrage. But do understand, it's difficult to go above a thousand or a couple thousand dollars a month, right? But if you do have five, ten thousand dollars $10,000, then you should consider one of those. And for me personally, I chose private label because it is the more scalable because I didn't want to have 10, 20, 30 different products to make 20, 30, $50,000 a month because I wanted to scale my business. Now, if I wanted to just do $10,000 a month, that was a different story. That would have been a different story. But because I knew that I wanted to keep scaling my business, I didn't want to have a ton of inventory, a whole bunch of products. I like simplicity. That's why you see me always wearing black, right? Because I like simplicity. I like things to stay simple. And so I chose private label because number one, I can stand out from the competition. You know, I'm not selling just the same old 
you know, brand that everyone else is selling it. I'm creating my own, you know, I'm creating my own differentiation. I'm standing out from the competition. I'm adding my creativity into it. Number two, it's very scalable. And number three, I get to build long-term relationship with my suppliers and simply be able to, you know, uh, 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 create long-term uh, relationships because when you are ordering from the same person over and over and over, and usually one supplier can really open the door for you for many other things because a lot of our products are in the same niche. So let's say we'll sell this and then we'll sell an eraser, we'll maybe sell a whiteboard, we'll sell everything that go with it, right? Where with wholesale, you're just selling anything that really makes money. And even with private label, you are starting with anything that makes money, but over time you can start building a brand around it. You can, you know, it's a, a, a sellable business. Where with wholesale, it's like, well, it's very easy to compete with you. Why can't I just go find your distributor and then sell your same product? Where with private label, you know, oftentimes we have trademarks, we have patents, we have all the stuff that we create. And so we have this moat around our business. And always remember, don't start a business based on your budget, start a business based on what the business needs. Because even, because although you need money to make money, you personally do not need to have the money in order for you to make the money because as long as you've got a process, as long as you have a step-by-step -step on how to do it, you can find someone who's got the money and have them inject money in your business so that way you can grow your business. Hope you guys found value in this. If you want BJK University, if private label is something that you want to do and want BJK University to walk you through the entire process, click the link below this video to see if you qualify to get on a one-on-one -on -one strategy session with one of our enrollment advisors. Outside of that, love you guys. Appreciate you being here. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.